King Films with the Inglewood Rams head coach Kevin Johnson. Hey, coach, I wanted to just start off by saying congratulations on um, getting the opportunity to become the head coach over here at Inglewood. Just real quick, talk about that, coach. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dream come true, man. I'm, I'm born and raised in the community, man. Uh, I went to Southside Middle School. I went to Greenfield Elementary was right next to Southside, and, and, I, and I graduated from Inglewood. So, you know, it's my neighborhood, it's my community, and I just want to go out and make them proud. Yes, sir, Coach. Just talk about that. How excited you was to become the head coach of a school you did such great things at? Right, right, right. I, like I said, it's, it's it's surreal. It's almost like a dream come true. And I just really appreciate everyone who, give, who gave me the opportunity to be the head coach, to be in this position to lead these young men. And, and bring bring some glory back to the South Side. When you got the call, Coach, what what was you doing? Uh, when I got the call, I I, I don't know if I, I think I might have been in baseball practice. Uh, but I, man, it was it was it was it, it was unbelievable for real. Like uh, Miss Torino, uh, our principal, she she was the one who gave me the call, and uh, she let me know that her and the staff were behind me and. Um, you know, it was it was unbelievable, man. It's, it's not really even words that I can use to explain the, the feeling and the experience that I went through. What did you do to celebrate? Uh, I, honestly, uh, I don't think I did anything to celebrate, but just more so just focus on my plans on getting the team right and, and my vision of what I see Inglewood football to be in the future. Talk about that a little bit more, Coach. Talk about that vision. Talk about the new yeah. standard over uh, on Barnes Road. Uh, excellence. Um, I think, you know, I'm big on discipline. I'm big on the small things and uh, not beating ourselves. So I'm letting them know early on in the game that we're not going to be beating ourselves. We're not going to have a lot of turnovers offsides. When we have those things happen in practice, they don't, they don't, they get corrected immediately. We get corrective action immediately. We don't wait until after practice. So they're starting to understand the seriousness of, you know, small penalties like offsides holdings. I punish them immediately. And so we get, we get, we get corrective action for, for the things that we're not doing well, but in a positive manner. Coach, talk about the coaching staff you put in uh, in place to execute this new standard over here at Inglewood. Um, I have a new OC. His name is Christopher Stevens. Uh, he was the imp he was the quarterback coach at Impact last year, and he's coming in. A uh, young guy. He's got a lot of energy, uh, very disciplined, and uh, I, I got him to a high expectation as well. So, you know, I'm expecting a lot of big things from the offense. I think he's uh, the right man to be able to handle the pressure that I'm putting on him as well. And uh, I think we're going to be doing a really good job on that side of the ball this year. Coach, we all know no program can ascend to the top without great support from the administration. Talk, talk about that real quick. How, how much the administration been behind you since you got the job? Man, since I've got the job, I have nothing but great things to say about the administration. Uh, Ms. Torino, our principal, she's been excellent. She's been supportive. Um, our AD, uh, Coach Pate. And then I also have a, 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 one of our assistant principals, Coach Gaspar, on staff with us. So we have admin on staff so the kids know that uh, some of the behavior issues that we've had in the past are no longer tolerated. So um, we expect to be the best citizens on campus and we're expected to be good students in the classroom. How easy was the transition going from assistant coach to head coach, being that you've been in the program for a while now? Well, I've been in there, I've been in the program for the last four years, so the transition was smooth. It wasn't, I don't think it was a big shock to the kids. Um, a lot of them expected me to, to, or hoped that I would be the one to get the job. So um, the transition, ironically, has been pretty smooth. Coach, when you got the job, the cupboard wasn't bare. You got a, a ton of talent over on Barnes Road, right. notably uh, Jalen Scarver, right. Malik Neely. Just right. talk about your two uh, dogs real quick and what they bring to the um, table. Jalen Scarver, I think you guys are going to see a different uh, Jalen this year. Um, just for the simple fact, he's going to be used more on defense to be a little more versatile. Uh, you're going to see him a little bit at outside linebacker. You're going to see him a little bit at defensive end. He primarily plays corner. And then you're going to see him on offense as well. So, um, you know, big expectations out of him. He had a really good spring game versus Baldwin uh, and Sandalwood. So, you know, the expectations for him are really high to be a leader on our team. Give me a second on Malik. I seen him wrestle this uh, oh, yeah, all season, yeah. Coach. He was a beast on that mat. And I know that's going to um, transition well over for you uh, this 100%, fall. 100%. Uh, like I said, Malik, has, he's always been a dog ever since he's been in the ninth grade. And I told him when he was in the ninth grade, I was going to make him a really good linebacker. And uh, like I said, he's led our team in tackles since the 10th grader. Uh, we have an expectation of 100 tackles this year for him. Um, so I expect him to answer the call and, and, and continue to lead the defense like he's been leading over the last couple of years. Coach, you was a great quarterback. You done coached some great quarterbacks to come out of this city. Talk about your quarterback over at Inglewood, and what can you get out of him this year? Uh, okay, we got a young quarterback coming in, uh, Ty Keister. Uh, a lot of people may not know that. 
Um, but this young kid I've had since he was, I trained him since he was nine years old. So he's a young kid that I feel like uh, can take the reins for us and, and, and really do some really, really nice things for us at quarterback. Um, he has a lot of athletes around him. Um, we have, uh, I mean, Anthony Brown, I, I didn't really speak too much about him, but he's one of our uh, corners, but he's the guy who is a superstar at baseball. He's on the USA developmental team for 17 and under. He's been all summer, he's been working on his baseball stuff, but he's just an extreme athlete that he can help us on both sides of the ball. So Ty just really has to be able to distribute and not turn the ball over. Coach, staying with Ty, I, I, I seen him a little bit in youth football. And in my opinion, Coach, before it's all said and done, this kid has all the attributes to be one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Florida when it's all said and done. 100%. Can, can you talk about his his limit, Coach, if he have one at all? I, I think his only restriction is his height. That's it. His DNA. Everything else he brings to the game. He has a big arm. He's smart. He's athletic. He's fast. Um... He's just about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, That's it. But other than that, he, he, I, I think he has the potential. And I was a really good quarterback at Englewood. I think he has the potential to be the best quarterback ever at Englewood. Yes, sir, Coach. Going back to Jalen, a uh, ton of scouts mentioned his name um, this spring. Uh, can you talk about him potentially playing on Saturdays, Coach? And how realistic is that? Oh, 100, uh, super realistic. He has a 3.6 GPA, a uh, really smart kid, comes from a great household, super, super awesome support system. Um, has great parents, and then you know his older brother is now at Morgan State uh, playing Division One football at the uh, HBCU. So uh, all Jalen has to do is just not mess it up and uh, come out and have a consistent season that he had like last year. And I think uh, because of his character, his grades, and his attitude, and his production on the field that he has a really, really bright future. Give me some of your team goals for your first uh, season campaign coaching. What do you look to accomplish? Uh, you know, I you know I got some really really high expectations for our team this year. Uh, I don't want to set a record, but you know I definitely want us to be above 500 for sure. Uh, but I think we have an opportunity to do something really really special this year. Yes, sir, coach. Before we get out of here, we we, we talked plenty about the new standard on the field, but let's talk about the standard in the classroom for any kid that want to come in the future and be a part of the Inglewood Rounds program. Just talk about how serious y'all take the academic part of this over at Inglewood. I, I can tell coach. you, I graduated with a 3.9 GPA when I was in high school. I was International Honor Society in college. I was National Junior Honor Society in middle school, and I was National Honor Society in high school. Academics is extremely important to me, and if you can't perform in the classroom, it's going to be very hard for you to perform for me on the field. So, you know, I want to help develop men uh, into good citizens and have good character and be good people um, in our community. So that's my that's my biggest goal is. So you can't be a good man without taking responsibility in the classroom. Hey, Coach, thanks for talking with me. Good luck to y'all future. Thank you.